Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I think most of you are familiar with this project at this point. We've got a Telecaster style neck going on to an LP Junior style body. It's going to be a really interesting one. Humbucker bridge, P90 neck. Balancing those will be fun. They'll just have to be slightly different heights. No problems there. Getting some custom hardware on this guy. And today we are finishing off our white primer, which is actually our white background in this case, um, because there's no need to go over it with a white lacquer with the primer. And we're going to do a burst on it. For this, we are using the Oxford White Primer, the high build. This stuff, it builds up quick. I used, uh, you will have maybe seen a video on guide coating from me recently, or maybe not, maybe I haven't pu published it yet, but I used like a coat of it to get this guide coat on here. And uh, yeah, builds fast. And then we're doing a burst in Daphne Blue. And because these are such nice cans, we are gonna be able to do it freehand, I think. But You'll have to watch and see how I do that. Uh, and if I have some trouble with it, well, then we'll fix it. Funny story about paint. Uh, anytime you screw it up, you can probably fix it. So for better or for worse here, guys, instead of spending more time introducing the project and talking about it, I've decided to just go ahead and take a bunch of painting footage for you guys to take a look at, and I can talk over it. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, hopefully this works out and you guys find this video interesting and you get to, uh, yeah, see how I do some of this painting. In terms of the Oxford cans, you guys have probably seen me talk about them before, and uh, at this point you probably know that I like them. If you are at all interested in picking some of those up, they're currently only available in Canada. It's a Canadian company, but I think they are planning on expanding. They've heard your feedback. They are looking into it. Hopefully we can get these available, at least in the States, fairly soon. If you're interested in picking them up, I will put the link in the description below. And I just ask if you do uh, end up grabbing them, they have the opportunity for you to say, you know, how you heard about them or, you know, where you found out about the paint. If you can put my name in there, I would appreciate it. It helps me kind of keep this relationship going so that I can keep getting their stuff and keep demoing it for you guys. They've got a lot of really cool vintage colors that I'm excited to try out. This footage is slowed down. Uh, it's coming to an end here, but kind of gives you a nice idea and hopefully you were paying attention to the overlap that I had if you're looking at painting with spray cans it's still important much like with a gun that you keep that 50% overlap between your strokes and you can see me doing that here this is real time you can see I'm putting this paint on quite quickly and that's because it's lacquer based and this nitrocellulose lacquer this vintage formula paint dries really quick so I can apply it in these thin coats and, and quickly and I can follow up with my subsequent coats very very quickly as long as I am careful about how much I put on in a single session a single spray session so that's why I'm doing these real light and I'm just kind of building them up quickly all of this was done kind of in short order the uh, again that slow motion footage that I talked uh, that I took rather even though I was speaking over it about something else if you do look at that you can really see that 50% overlap these cans are actually great for that. Uh, it's tough to tell from this side footage, but there is a bit of a fan pattern to the spray on here. And that spray fan pattern makes that a lot easier as opposed to just your standard conical pattern. I should note that the owner has told me they're now gonna come with both. So when you get these cans, uh, they'll come with both this spray pattern uh, cap and the conical cap, which is important when you go to do what I'm doing right now, which is adding the burst in. The spray cap is great for going around the edges and you can see that that's going really smoothly. Uh, it's quite easy to do the edges this way, but when you get to the point where you actually have to do the burst itself, well then a smaller spray pattern is easier to work with and the conical pattern is smaller. When you have the, the fan pattern like I have here, you have to be very careful and you end up wasting a lot of paint. You can see the bulk of the paint that I'm spraying is going right past the guitar into this, this fan booth that I have. It's, it's not actually hitting the guitar. I'm also, if you're paying careful attention to my technique here, I'm angling the can away from the guitar and uh, toward the edge as opposed to toward the center of the guitar. I'm doing this to keep my burst fairly tight here to keep this vignette kind of focused on the edges. If I angle the can toward the center of the guitar, I'm going to end up with a lot more overspray and a lot more fade, which is fine in some circumstances. There are reasons to do that. Um, 
particularly with a transparent paint. If you're doing a transparent burst, like a sunburst style thing, maybe you want that. Maybe you want a broader fade, a broader burst pattern. But here, I'm trying to keep it a little tighter. These opaque bursts, I've always found, look better when they're kind of restricted to a smaller area around the edge. So that's why I've got the can angled away from the guitar almost, angled right toward the edge so that I'm really limiting how much of this paint is actually flowing onto the face of the guitar. I get enough overspray doing the edges to kind of fade that out a little bit. And in fact, you'll see me come in afterward. I'm doing the burst with the spray can because with lacquer, it doesn't matter if it comes out of a can or, or from a gun. As long as you're getting a decent coat, the paint is the same quality. But uh, you will see me come back in with a mini gun after to tighten up this burst even further. That's going to happen soon here. Now this footage is all still at regular speed, pretty much everything except that short slow motion clip has been so far, and by pretty much I mean everything. So you can really get a sense of how quickly I apply this and, uh, and how it goes on. I'm not spending a lot of time in one area, I'm not applying it very heavily. This is a good quality can so you get good coverage. Yeah, that's, that's really kind of all there is to it. Uh, you may wonder if we've gone back in time here, but no, I just figured I'd show you guys a different angle. Uh, so I, I am kind of re-showing the first round of doing the burst here. Um, this is, yeah, because this angle may or may not be helpful to you, and also because it seemed kind of cool to have a camera down here for a change. <laughs> so let me know uh, what you think of that. This might be uh, might be kind of odd. So if I get a whole bunch of answers in the comments section telling me what the heck are you doing, not only do I not want to watch something twice, but I don't want to watch it from below, then I will get that. I, uh, I did get in trouble last time I tried to take a selfie with someone else from an angle that wasn't weirdly above us both, so <laughs> so be it. Anyway, this is what uh, what applying the burst looks like from this angle. Now, I did say this stuff goes on quickly, but you, you definitely do need to be careful, and you can see that uh, t applying the burst does take a while, and I'm applying it very carefully, and, and I do have actually a reasonable amount of experience at this, so don't think that uh, it's not okay to take a little bit longer when you're doing it for the first time. Be careful with the, the can motions. But like I said at the beginning of this video, if you mess something up, you can probably fix it, particularly with these opaque colors. If you're doing an opaque style burst like this, it's not that difficult to rectify. Um, you can come back in with the white from the center, which you'll see me do with a gun, or you can, you know, paint over it, sand it off, whatever you need to do. Sometimes paint is an iterative process. It takes more than one try to get what you're looking for, uh, certainly more than one coat, and, and we just need to be patient and keep in mind that things can generally be fixed. They won't need to be fixed as much if we are patient and careful in the steps that we take, but uh, there's, there isn't really any paint that you can put on that you will never be able to take off. So it's not the end of the world. Don't be afraid to make a couple mistakes here and there. It's just a little extra work, but we're all doing this for fun anyway. So, hey, who cares if we have to do a little bit more of it? All right, so that's my motivational speech for the day. Here is what we're left with from the spray cans. This is, of course, with no clear coat, and as I've alluded to a couple times, we will uh, we will do a little bit of work to tighten up this burst a little further, just because that's what I think this one needs before we do move on to the clear coat stage. But that's a pretty passable burst. Uh, you could you could get away with that one, so to speak. And if you like a slightly broader burst, well, there you go. So here's what we're going to use to tighten this up. It's the Olympic White Nitrocellulose Lacquer. Uh, same formula, as far as I understand. I mean, really, what we're dealing with here is the same paint, but in a nice small can. One thing that I really like about these <laughs> Oxford paints is they come in the little 8-ounce cans like that, um, which is plenty. That's really all you need for, for most of these guitar projects. So it's, it's awesome that they're not forcing people to buy like a gallon or even a quart to do a guitar. You know how many guitars you can paint with a quart? It's quite a few, probably no less than four. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to paint four guitars the same color, so it's great to have that option. I've got my fan pattern dialed all the way down here to be more like, well, a con conical cap that you would get with one of those cans. 
except I can uh, I can of course regulate this to put out less paint and and have a little bit higher error ratio and, and really have a little more control so having a gun is an advantage of course if you're uh, if you're trying to do this kind of work this is just an inexpensive little DeVilbis mini gun. Uh, you can find it in the Amazon link in the description if you're looking, or my actual favorite mini gun that I own, because I can't afford something crazy like a SATA mini jet or whatever, uh, is the Warwick 878SHE. I do have a Warwick link as well in the description if you're looking for one of those. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll have seen me demo it before. So. I find that to be a nicer gun than this one, but uh, I use it for acrylics and I don't want to cross-contaminate. I use this guy for my nitrocellulose lacquers and it works quite well. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this carefully, slowly. I'm not putting out much paint. I'm focusing around the edges first and then I'm almost kind of coloring in the center and I could turn up the fan to do that as well. But really all that process is for the center is just taking away the overspray, just kind of going over it with some white because there's a little bit of overspray that kind of hazed up the center there it's very easy to get rid of so once I've done this process I will be finished with the color work on this guitar and it'll be time to go ahead and move on to the clear coat now again the quality of the paint that we're working with here uh, doesn't differ really between the spray cans and the normal cans it's not like a 2k clear coat in that respect and you also don't have to lay it out as heavy as something like that so spray cans are actually a perfectly reasonable way to get a good coat of lacquer I know uh, a lot of people don't like to hear that and don't get me wrong generally speaking I prefer to use a paint gun it's a little bit more efficient but in terms of quality we can absolutely get a good coat of lacquer on here because it melts into itself so how heavy you apply it isn't as critical either. You just need to be careful about how you're building your coats. I'm building these up with a gloss can. Uh, as we've talked about before, You there are some additives in the semi-gloss and the satin and the matte that can cause it to kind of haze up a bit if you build up too much of it. So what, I, what you do, this is going to be a satin finish, but you build it up with the gloss, um, make sure you've got enough on there to work with, level it off and then you spray your final coat of satin make sure your conditions are good you don't have any dust your fans are on all of that uh, and you finish it up so here we are with some gloss it's got a little bit of orange peel as it as it usually does but that'll be easy to sand out we've got a couple coats on there that we put on quickly and i'm going to wait a few days and do it all again so that's it for this one guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you like how this guitar turned out if you did like the video please feel free to give it a thumbs up i would appreciate it and remember to subscribe so that you can see how this project turns out and you can uh, follow my upcoming great guitar build off 2021 build thanks again guys have a good one and i will see you next time